for joining. This week, I'm really excited because it's the start of content marketing. This is just an overview. Next week, we get into the grind of content marketing, more of the implementation, marketing, promotion. Uh, and you know what I want you guys to first think about is a lot of times when people are doing content marketing and they're trying to do any form of SEO, a lot of times they look back and ask like, oh, you know, why should I do this? What's going to happen? Why didn't I start? Or they keep asking all these questions themselves. I just want you to look ahead and say, why not? I'm going to be telling you a lot of cool stuff to do. And I just want you to look ahead and be like, why not do this? Because if you do take the time and energy to do a lot of these content marketing tactics, you'll see results. This is where we get into the execution phase, right? And this is when we get into content marketing, explaining what it is, how to come up with topics, as well as figuring out what to write on, general guidelines to follow when creating content. And then over time, we'll start getting into, over the next coming weeks, promotion, link building, and then we'll start getting to the optimization phase. So the cool part about content marketing is everyone's talking about it. They're talking about how it's amazing, how it's awesome, it drives business. You know, there's tons of quotes from people like the Content Marketing Institute, which just focuses purely on content marketing. And you know what? It's so effective that it's just rapidly growing in popularity. And I have a graph on that later on. And the reason it's growing in popularity is because it works. If it didn't, people would stop talking about it. But for you to do well throughout the whole content marketing process, you have to be constant. If you're not constant, you're not continually cranking away, eventually you won't do well. Content marketing isn't a short play. If you just work at it for a few months, you're not gonna get results. But if you do it for a year straight, I bet you your business is going to be totally different from when you started. It's that effective. And we're here to help, right? So if you're worried about the whole process or getting started, don't worry about it. Don't feel overwhelmed. It is like a machine and it can be automated. And we're going to break down how you can do that each and every single step of the way. Again, I can't reinforce this enough. You have to be consistent and you have to be continually doing this for not just a few months, but for six months, a year. And after that, you need to keep going for another few years after then. Ideally, you don't even want to stop. The ROI is amazing. It's one of the highest forms of ROI that I've generated in all forms of marketing that I've ever tested out. That's why I spend so much time and energy in content marketing. It's so crazy. You know, between all my businesses right now, we spend around $115,000 a month just on content marketing. That's how huge of an ROI it is. And as I mentioned, it's on the rise, right? It's continually getting popular. Reason it's getting popular is because it's working. If it wasn't working, it wouldn't continually grow in popularity. Now, you may be asking yourself, hey, why is content marketing important? Sure, it drives traffic, but why is it important? Well, here's a few quick facts for you. Conversion rates are six times higher for people who are leveraging content marketing versus people who aren't leveraging it at all. So. I hope that changes your mind because if your conversion rates can be that much more higher, it just shows that it's really powerful and effective. 73% have someone in the organization to see their content strategy. That's a huge number. If large companies are hiring people just to do their content, they're all ROI based. What does that tell you? It's effective. And it doesn't matter if you're in B2B or B2C, it's effective in both categories. But funny enough, there's more B2B content marketers. It just shows that it works for any field and segment out there. Um, and these days, it's funny, ad blockers are so popular that browsers these days, some of them are even trying to integrate that within their browser, right? I was reading something from like X Firefox or Mozilla team trying to create browsers with ad blockers and stuff like that. They're so popular that your ads are going to constantly get blocked. So if you want to do well, consider creating content because when you have content, you can end up selling through content. You can get people to keep coming back and the conversions through it are much higher than versus if you didn't have people coming to your site via content marketing. And best of all, it just helps you build a relationship with your audience. Think about it. I have a relationship with you. Sure, you found me online, but why do I have a relationship? You may have read some of my blog posts. You may have experienced some of my content through webinars. You may have experienced some of my content through podcasts or videos. But we've built a relationship. When you build a relationship, it's so powerful. 
you can get people to do a lot more things because they build that trust with you. Without the relationship, they're not going to have that trust. Here's an example. You see these ads all over my own blog. Uh, you know, Jared's on this webinar. This is his lovely wife. Uh, and, you know, she has a skincare company. Um, and Jared, content marketing, it's changed your life, right? And here your number is actually funny enough. So Yeah, yeah. I was just looking at our numbers, Neil, and we're up 600% with regards to organic traffic year over year. And it's crazy. And why? What's the one thing that you did, Jared? <laughs> we started writing more and better articles and then just doing, following your, your teachings and steps in regard to outreach, you know, and, and obtaining links for them. Exactly, right? It's super effective. So, and, and here are Jared's numbers. He's growing constantly. Why? Again, content marketing. It's just so amazing. You have to do it. And, you know, you can see his traffic, his sales continually climbing up to the right. Again, it's purely because he's leveraging content marketing. And here's his uh, search traffic according to similar web. Highest source of traffic. Just shows the power of content marketing. His e-commerce product pages aren't ranking everywhere on Google. A lot of times it's his content and then people find the content, then he links to his products and then he's generating sales, right? Conversion rates good. His revenue is climbing. Average order value is climbing. Everything's starting to improve. And again, a lot of it has to do uh, because of content marketing. Now here's some of his most popular posts. And if you look at this, you can see, yeah, you know, Image skincare. I don't know what that one is, Jared. But if you look at number two, what are these little bumps on my skin? Non acne bumps uh, debunked. He's getting a lot of traffic for things that are educational related, right? Number five, the top 20 thing, 26 things you should know about uh, hyaluronic acid or whatever that is, right? The point I'm trying to make is it's working for him. Hot topic to do skin plumping serums actually work, or hot topic, do skin plumping serums actually work, right? I'm reading the URL, so it's a bit more complicated, but you guys get the point. A lot of these are content related. Toner tips, skin types. I'm guessing that is what type of toner do you use based on your skin type? And it's working. Look at some of the keywords. It's not just the pages. It's also the keywords. Small bumps on face, bumps on face, tiny bumps on face, right? facial bumps, all variations of it for that page. Now, when you're doing content marketing, the key is to understand your customer problem. If you can't figure out their problem, you're not going to figure out what type of content to make, right? If you don't know what content to make, then you're just going to get all these people to your site and they're just not going to end up converting. It's, it, it then ends up coming down between your keywords and content. What kind of keywords do you want to rank for? And what kind of content do you have to create to rank? And when you're doing all of this, are you educating and helping people out? Because if you're not, you're not going to do well in the long run. And this works for almost any industry, but let's just take this graph for the e-commerce uh, journey. And this works for pretty much services as well. So the first step is people come, they're discovering their potential problem. Then they understand their potential problem. Once they understand it, then they're just like, all right, let me discover the potential solutions. Then from there, they decide the type of product or solution to test with or go with. They may end up comparing other brands to see what's best for the product, right, with for their problems. Then they may look for some discount codes. They may end up buying your product. And then from there, they're going to try to figure out how to use it or other creative ways to use a product in addition to what is advertised, right? And it keeps rinse and repeating. That's usually the process. So now let me even break down on how we did this for a software company, non-e-commerce, software slash service. As you can see, here's our traffic growth. What do you think it's caused from? Content marketing. That's one of the main reasons we have over 100,000 users. We were able to create thousands of articles on stuff that just educates people and helps them out on anything or any problems that they have that could be potentially related to our product or service. And it's great because all these people who are reading your content, they build the trust, the loyalty, then they're much more likely to convert. And with this, right, 
And I made this mistake with one of my other SaaS companies, Kissmetrics. I went after the wrong audience. Just getting the traffic isn't enough. And this goes back to the musketeer, right? The persona that we had you fill out earlier. But when it comes down to targeting your audience, where are they hanging out? You know, I found out with Crazy, a lot of them are hanging out at CSS galleries, web design communities. And funny enough, I didn't just create content. I even bought ads on a lot of these places and it converts. You can even create videos, education material, webinars. Content marketing isn't just creating text-based articles. We also went out there and got a lot of press and a lot of press in the areas or from the websites and blogs that our readers were reading. For example, Mashable and TechCrunch covered us really early on. A lot of our customers read those blogs. For that reason, we were targeting those blogs, right? We we're creating lists of the most popular blogs. We we're Googling from, we we're using sites like Alltop to figure out, all right, which areas, blog, sector should we be targeting to try to get press? In other words, you have to be creative. Writing content and text isn't the only part about content marketing. You have to get super creative. The more creative you get, the more likely you are to succeed. And you can do so by following this process that I'm going to show you. So you guys have all heard, you know, uh, Benjamin Franklin and electricity and everything with his story. So we're taking some of the concepts and we're going to apply it to content marketing all the way from stringing your ideas to figuring out your target kite to supercharging your content. Right. Think about that thunderbolt and then the key personnel, the people that you need to make it happen. So how do you find your ideas? Where do you go? Which pages should you be optimizing? What should you be focusing on? A great way to do this is by using keyword, Google Keyword Planner. If you use Google Keyword Planner, you can figure out, all right, here's some of the topics, the areas that we should be targeting. We can even take in competitor URLs and put in them into Google Keyword Planner and see what keywords they're targeting, right? You already have this sheet. You can end up filling this out. This is really important because once you have keywords that other people are ranking for or keywords that your customer ends up typing in before they consider buying your product, or signing up for your service or using your software. This will end up helping you figure out how competitive it is, the traffic volume, should you go after it now, later on, right? It all helps you map it out. This all goes back to the musketeer, which we talked about over the previous weeks. And let me give you an example, right? So this company here on the left, they create sweaters. And their whole pitch is their sweaters are going to be lifelong. You may not need a lot of sweaters or jumpers or whatever you want to end up calling them, but the moment you buy one, it'll last for life. And as it lasts for life, you know, people will love it. They'll use it. And you know, they'll tell other people about it. And over the years, the word of mouth and everything will just continually increase. So what you can end up doing is you can end up taking, your site, let's say you're the jumper site, you go to Google Search Console, you go to search traffic, you go to search uh, analytics, then you want to filter by position, right? It's going to be by default clicked on queries, and then it is by position. This will tell you what you're already getting traffic from because you want to sort by impressions, and you want to look at the keywords at the, which are getting you a lot of impressions but are not in the top five. You still want ones that are highly ranked, but if they're driving you a lot of impressions and they're not in the top five, that means the potential is huge. Uh, and just to go back here, I use a plugin called Keywords Anywhere. And that gives me more data within my Google Search Console. So if you put in you know, this sweater site into Ahrefs, you can go into top pages and you'll see what's working. This will give you a lot more data on the pages, the keywords, right? The 30 year sweatshirt. They're a big belief that their sweaters will last forever. And it is true. They do really last forever. I got to get my dad one now. You can also use other tools like SERPSAT and SEMrush and see what other keywords are related, what they're ranking for, right? The positions. It, because a lot of times if you're doing this for other sites, you may not have the data in Google Search Console. You can always use those other tools out there. As you click through, you can find a lot more details on these keywords, such as a competition. If it's not that competitive, yet there's good volume, you should consider going after it, right? Because if it's working for someone else, then why can't it work for you if they're in the same space? 
You can also take some of their keywords and then type them into Ahrefs under the Content Explorer, and that'll help you find other popular content types and pieces that you can end up writing. I also love using SEM Rush. You can do the same thing, keyword analytics, keyword overview, right? And, and then when you click there, you type in the keywords. It'll show you who's ranking, who's bidding on the terms, other related keywords that you should be going after. It'll give you a ton of ideas. These tools are amazing. It's funny, when I first started SEO, none of these tools were out there. If they were now, like my life would be so much better and easier. The other thing you want to do is, once you figure out who's working and what competitors, you need to write it down. If you don't write it down, you're not going to be very strategic with everything because then you'd be like, oh, I have all this data, then you're going to forget about it. But the moment you write it down, you're seeing who's doing what, who's not doing what, where you can improve, eventually you'll know, hey, where are the opportunities? See, when you write things down, you'd be like, oh, crap. This is a really popular keyword and no one's really going after it. They're doing it from paid, but no one's going after it from organic. I should go after this, right? But if you don't write it down and cross-reference everything, you won't know what to improve. Here's another thing to check out. You can see what platforms people are leveraging because through Ahrefs, you know, when you look at outgoing links, link domains, you can see where they're linking to, what platforms, like whether it's Instagram, what are they promoting heavily. If they're promoting something heavily, chances are it's working well for them. And the other thing I love doing is viewing the top content for any domains because this tells me what's getting the most Google traffic. This isn't just based on social shares, it's also Google traffic. So you combine the social shares with the Google traffic and now you have content that's not just getting traffic from one channel, but is getting traffic from multiple channels, which is huge. So if you're also trying to figure out what sources these guys are getting their traffic from, you can also check out similar web. You put in competitor URLs in similar web and it'll show you what platforms everyone's getting their traffic from, which is quite amazing. And again, you can use uh, tools like Buzzsumo. You type in articles or keywords and when you type in the keywords, you'll see what's getting a lot of traffic for people, which is amazing, right? Like. You're looking at all based on social shares. And that's awesome because the last thing you want to do is create stuff that's going to be duds. And the cool part about this, and we'll go into this in the coming weeks, when you use things and you like assume when you write on what's popular, you can then look to see who shared all that content. And then you can end up, you know, writing similar content and then hit them all up and ask them to share your content, assuming your content's way better. You can also use depictions. And what I like about depictions is, and you'll see this on the next slide, let's say you search for a keyword and you have like some articles. You can even see through depictions the average comments that some of these articles are getting. Because if you know it has a lot of comments, it's not just getting social shares. People are engaging. The more engagement, the more likely they are to buy and convert into customers. That's super important. Just think about that. Why would you want to write content that doesn't convert into customers when you could be focusing your time and energy on stuff that converts, right? And the other thing I love is a lot of these tools out there that I'm showing you, like the Buzzsumo, the depictions, you can even see the type of content that's doing well within your space and what people are creating. So if video content does well, but no one's creating it, that means there's a need for it. So why wouldn't you exploit that and start creating video content? Or even on the graph on the right, look at infographics. They do really well on Pinterest, but I don't know why a lot of people don't create infographics. And they're actually not that affordable. You can find writers at Dribbble for infographics. It's all about just figuring out what's working and doing more of it and beating out everyone at their own game. It's just taking data. It's not rocket science. So funny enough, someone in our offices is sitting here, they're looking at all the sweets and they're like, this is so good and they're giving up sugar. And according to Mike, they haven't ate sugar in a few months, but we'll see if we can get them to break it today. <laughs> the joys I have. All right. So the other thing that you want to check out is tag clause, right? You'll see popular themes, depictions. It makes it really easy to just see what's working, what's not. You want to also take all of this, what's working for you, and add it in a spreadsheet. Take Google Docs or Google Sheets. You create a spreadsheet of all your top content, the traffic, the keyword count. You can look at you know, who's linking. You can even link to the article. 
And by doing this, you can figure out, all right, here's what it works for me. And you can do this for all your competitors. Here's what's working for my competitors. And I needed to start considering creating better versions of this. So now let's get into number two, your target kite. So pick a competitor, log into Ahrefs, search for a term and sort by traffic, right? When you do this, you'll start seeing what's driving people their traffic, what are the most popular pieces of content, and that's what you should end up considering going after. You can also do the same thing to see what they're ranking for. I love looking at organic keywords for that company and seeing what positions they are, what's driving their organic traffic, and which ones are driving most of the volume and which pages too, because this will give you ideas, right? And then you'll know what to do. You also want to check out the content that's raking. Is it basic? Is it advanced? What is it about? Do you see yourself writing better versions of this? Do you see how you can beat them by one-upping them? Do you think their content is just basic? Can you go more in depth? Better images, more stats, more data, create an edge. Is it outdated and you can create a better, newer version of it, right? These are all things that you want to end up considering. Are some of the keywords that they're ranking for, is there way more opportunity? Such as if they're ranking for store locations near me. Well, can you one-up them? Can you do better there? All potential that you should be considering going after when you're trying to figure out what content types to create and what not to create, right? Also, check out the comments. A lot of people neglect this, but comments are people leaving a response. They're telling you what they think, why they like it, what they don't like. They're even putting their feedback saying like, Oh, it would be amazing if you also added this, this, and the other. Or, hey, I'll, you also check, thought about you know, looking into this other theme here. Or, oh, this is off and this could be improved. And once you add all that stuff or you look at all that stuff, it'll then give you ideas of what you should be doing when you're rewriting it, right? So, for example, when you're going through all of this, you, know, you can figure out, all right, is what I'm doing – you know, the right thing, can I rewrite it better? Can I take their opinions, make it all better and take the comments and just make a more amazing piece and just one up them. So you have a worksheet. I want you guys to fill this out, fill in the conquer worksheet. There's all the steps. It breaks on what you need to do step by step. And if you do this, you'll be better off and you'll be able to conquer your competitors. All right. So the next part is super tricky and big Nesh is on the phone. He sent like four boxes of cookies. How many did he send, Mike? Four, eight boxes actually of grandma's cookies. Eight boxes of grandma's cookies. <laughs> because he's, he doesn't live in the U.S., so he thought grandma's <laughs> cookies were like the standard for cookies. But really, they're like the cookies you get at like the the, the gas station <laughs> <Yeah>. store. <laughs> uh, I was thinking of sending a huge box of cookies to every single person at the office. <laughs> and gummy bears. And gummy bears. All right. So now let's get to supercharging your content. Think about some of the stuff I've done on some of my sites, the design, the thoroughness. Some of my content pieces are 30,000 words, like this definitive guide to conversion optimization. This is how you go above and beyond. Look at the design, the customized images, the graphics, right? You have to look at everyone in your industry, download their examples, and do better than them. There's no reason why you can't. That's how you supercharge. You're like, all right, is the content in depth? No, I'm going to make mine more in depth. Is it long format like guides? Does it have accurate information? Is it old? Is it outdated? How can I make it stand out from the crowd? Can I add videos, customized graphics, maybe audio files, right? You need to constantly go above and beyond. You need to educate people. You need to make sure someone can read your content and be like, oh my God, I now know what to do step by step. I have all these instructions. And then you need to back it up with data so then they're just like, I have to do this. If I don't do this, I'm going to like just not do well. But if I do this, I can see how I can crush my competitors because all this data and these steps, I have no choice but to do it. And you know what? When you're writing content, are you taking a side? Is there any conflicting viewpoints? You know, there's no reason why you can't just pick a side and like have a stance be like, no, this is the right way to do it. Everyone else is doing it the wrong way. And make sure you back everything up with research. And research isn't hard these days. You can Google for almost anything and you can find stats and you can link to it. You can even take graphs and charts from other people, integrate it within your website, link to them. You can take case studies. This is all stuff that will help you do well.
And of course, as I mentioned, make sure you put time and energy into design. That's what causes stuff to get shared. And you know, if you have any logos or any ways to build trust or anything that just stands out, that's not just the stock photos. I know I use them, but don't just stick with stock photos. You can crush it, right? And here are examples like people taking stuff. You can look at what others are doing from like a land book and other places and just like, all right, I'm going to take some of these design samples and use it as inspiration. So now that we got that out of the way, let's go into the fourth step and then we'll take a quick break and then we'll go into the last step. The personnel, who's going to make it happen? Are you going to do it by yourself or with a team? Right? And I'll get into this in the next coming weeks, but if you're going to use a team, you know, why not use Trello? My David, who works with us here, he uses Trello for everything, for researching, writing, editing. It's a really streamlined process, and we'll break down how we do it so you guys can just copy it. We'll even give you all the templates. Are your writers, right? You want them to outline. Outline in Google Docs. It makes it so much easier because then everyone can get access to it and then go from there. You want your editors to use things and do everything in WordPress because that's the platform that you ideally want to be publishing in. Not using WordPress, that's okay, but eventually consider switching to WordPress. If you need to hire help, no worries. I'll go over that next week. This isn't the right time and place, but I'll go over it in due time. If you follow everything and you supercharge your content, you can do really well. So here's some action items. We're going to take a quick break after this. Um, action items, download the ideas title sheet, right? You want to find three data sources relevant for your industry. You want to start filling them out with samples. Uh, you want to download the examples of the content that's amazing in your industry. And of course, you want to use all of that so you can create better versions of it. So let's take a few minute break here, and then we'll go into the next lesson. So Vigna, shall we do five minutes? I'm going to go get yes. some water and go to the bathroom, so I'm going to put my computer on mute. Sounds good. Um, yeah. I'm just going to do a quick announcement. So. Uh, Hi everyone, welcome to the webinar, <laughs> obviously. One cool thing that we did this week was all the videos for module one and two and the Q&As are live on the membership portal. And what we're planning to do is every, as soon as we shoot the videos, we're planning to put them recorded, edited into the membership portal within two days. So if you look, uh, today's session will be in on Thursday. Thursday's session will be in on Friday or Monday, depending on the weekends, right? So that's the schedule we're trying to keep. Uh, if you have any questions in the meantime, uh, just type them in the chat. I had some questions come through by email as well. So if you have any questions whatsoever, please type in the chat and we'll get them addressed at the end of the webinar. And obviously there's going to be a Q&A webinar uh, that's going to happen on Thursday. And yeah, I think everyone should have gotten their updates as well as invites to that. If you have any uh, questions or comments or if you didn't get the invite or if you have any questions about the membership portal, please email us at support at nilpatel.com or basically just hit us up here or just email us and we'll take care of it. So I just want to give you a quick announcement and yeah, we will wait for Neil. Uh, Jared, do you want to talk about the war story you were telling me about while we're taking the break? Yeah, sure. Um, this one's <laughs> kind of funny. <laughs> um, let's see. I can't remember how many years back, but I live in California in um, South Orange County, which is like halfway in between Los Angeles and San Diego. And maybe around five years ago or so, um, craft beer. Uh, was really hard to find and in high demand. And I had spent some time in Oregon growing up, and I got really familiar with craft beer. And I loved it. And um, I was sick of, like, drinking regular beer, so I kind of got into it. And um, my buddy and I decided to start a blog about it, okay? And we're kind of overachievers. And we had other businesses running, so we didn't want it to, like, take over our lives, you know. So the goal was to write a food blog because all of our friends were texting us saying, where do we go get beer? And we were spending all of our time on our phones telling people where to go. We thought, if we just build a website, uh -huh. then go to the website. So we built a website in WordPress, and the goal was to get free food and free beer, okay? There was no monetary goal, okay? Okay. Which is which is weird, but 
we just figured if this is going to be a side hobby, let's get free food and free beer, right? So <laughs> um, mm-hmm. we built this blog. We wrote really good articles. And we started doing some of the techniques that we're teaching to everyone here. And within a matter of a month, we were ranking number one for all the terms beer related to our area, both local and then from a lot of a lot of national beer searches. And so mm-hmm. long story short, um, <laughs> it was really successful. Uh, restaurants that serve beer and food started putting us on retainer as bloggers. So they tell us to come by once a month and we could order and eat and drink whatever we wanted. Um, we started getting free kegs of beer shipped to us. Um, we started getting so many free food invitations that I gained 40 pounds. <laughs> and okay. We got sick of like drinking beer and eating, and so we had to stop. And <laughs> basically, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it was a fun war story in that we really like over accomplished our goal, but it also shows the power of content marketing. And mm-hmm. what you know, teaching is right because I didn't pay for a single link. We just wrote really good reviews and write ups and created a lot of good online buzz through social media. And we were dominating the rankings there for years. That is epic, Jared. Okay. <laughs> The update is, though, I have lost most of that weight, so I'm in good shape now. <laughs> that is good. 